Hello, Dominica. Welcome to the Kyrie TV News. I'm your presenter, Vanessa Bruno. Let's go to the big stories, making the headlines. The Achievement Learning Center achieves a milestone in curriculum development for special needs children. Dominicans urged to treat migrants with respect and dignity. And Minister for Finance optimistic about Dominica's future in the boxing arena. Stay tuned for details of these stories and more after the break. Play multi X on Big Four, Daily Three, and Pick Two, and be part of our Multiply Your Christmas promotion. For every $4 spent on your game of choice with multi X, you get a chance to win goodies this Christmas. Your ticket will indicate whether you have won hats, turkeys, petrol vouchers, grocery vouchers, and instant cash prizes. What are you waiting for? Let Dominica National Lottery make everything possible for you this Christmas season. Play Big Four, Pick Two, and Daily Three. Don't forget multi X and watch us multiply your Christmas. Promotion valid from December 12, 2022 to January 14, 2023. Are you looking for that perfect setup for your conference, seminar, or company function? Or maybe you need a low-budget setup for your party, dinner, or private gathering. How about that professional production for your grand concert, festival, or outdoor event? Kyrie Sounds is here to provide you with everything you need. PA system, stage, lighting, microphones, tents, LED digital screens, generators, projectors, crowd barriers, and more. We also offer free event consultation to ensure the success of your special event. Call us today at 612-4050. Kyrie Sounds, your partner in sound, stage and lighting services. Welcome back. In our lead story, the Achievement Learning Center continues to provide educational and vocational skills for children with special needs. Here's Nathaniel Durand. With that story. The Achievement Learning Center ALC, a school for children with special learning needs, is moving ahead in its quest to provide educational and vocational skills for children with disabilities such as autism, Down syndrome, and ADHD, as there are different types of disabilities. According to the executive director of the ALC, Beverly LeBlanc, the school is now implementing part two of the school's development project, which includes the formulation of a curriculum and teaching aids for that purpose, which includes handbooks. LeBlanc says at the center, children are assessed and introduced to programs based on their levels of comprehension, determined by their developmental and not chronological age. Ms. LeBlanc says further that the children's learning is not assessed through exams, but by what is referred to as zonal proxima development, which involves input from their parents. We are not focused on exams to say we are focusing on common insurance or CXC. We work with the children until they get to the level. So we use what is called the zone of proximal development, which is we work where they are and we take them to the point where we would want them to be. We set goals for our children and these goals are set with the parents. So this is what we are. We have been in existence for since 2011. For the past two years, we did not have a physical location because due to financial situation as well as COVID. However, despite the fact that we were not functioning in a physical location, we were still functioning online. So we provided the services online as well as home. So the teachers would go to their homes and provide the services for the children. We just got a physical location, so we are presently located in the Kinsim Industrial Estate of Weydong Pass, Hard Rock Cement. So we have just gotten a physical location. We have two classrooms. We are still waiting for funding to finish up the last classroom, but we want to thank all our sponsors who helped us in ensuring that we got our classrooms ready, and we want to thank the manager. Lyricon printers who allowed us to use a location in their vicinity. Leblanc says though the school operated without a physical location, they were still able to implement projects throughout the time. She says from 2020, they implemented a project with assistance from the UNICEF, through which some 250 packages were delivered to families of the children. During this time also, we were able to source funding from the Canadian Fund for Local Initiatives, where we did, we trained parents and teachers on the sexual health education of children with disabilities. Why is that important? Because children with disabilities are the most vulnerable to sexual abuse, and so we wanted to teach them the importance of 
private part, public part, knowing how to take care of their body, knowing how to play friends. When you talk about sexual health education, I always keep saying that a child with Down syndrome doesn't necessarily mean that the child hormones doesn't have Down syndrome. They develop the same way that regular children develop. So we have atypical and typical developing children. But even if they may have a disability, whether physical or neurobiological, their, their bodies develop the same way. And then so they need to understand the different changes that are going to their body. They need to understand how to take care of themselves. They need to understand that they are wonderful, they are beautiful. And so this is why we did the sexual health education training program. Families of children with disabilities around the island in the Kalinago Territory, Portsmouth and the Alpha Center also benefited from this UNICEF program. Nathaniel Durand, Kyrie TV News. Turning our attention to the agriculture sector, the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, AICA, launches a pilot microfinance mechanism in Dominica. We join Linda Martin for that story. Gender inequalities in agriculture is a matter of concern to some agencies as the focus is heightened on food security and women's contribution to achieving stipulated sustainable development goals. The pilot microfinance mechanism dubbed AgroWomen Check and Grow Facility is a dynamic venture which began during the pandemic and became one of the penultimate exercises launched by the Guidon Project. So on a Fabian of the Guide on project says climate change coupled with dependent economies, fragile ecosystems and livelihoods make Dominica and other small islands extremely vulnerable to hazards. Men and women's unequal participation in agriculture is generally linked to gender-based access to land, to credit, extension services and other project productive assets. The gendered occupational segregation and differential wa wages are some of the reasons why this project came into, into, into force. It is imperative, therefore, that there are targeted interventions like this one to help narrow the differential gaps or the differential impacts of both men and women, and more importantly, increase resilience to hazards. Of paramount importance, it is also the design and policies and programs that provide protection for women and other vulnerable, vulnerable groups in the event of hazards. And within our project, the Guidance Project, we have advanced this um, design and policies and programs by doing the following. And they are building the capacities of hazard-prone communities to apply climate and early warning information to reduce vulnerability and loss of agricultural livelihoods. And those of us who are here who have been participants, you you would have experienced that with the Pixar program and the CSA training that Ken spoke about. Strengthening Dominica's end-to-end -end early warning systems, which means that we provided five hazard monitoring stations in Dominica to improve early warning systems. Mainstreaming of gender-responsive agricultural sector strategies for disaster risk management. And of course, today, the development and the execution launch of the gender-responsive microfinance strategy. According to Fabian, some of the women's groups have received grants which enabled them to build resilience, to mitigate, to adapt and prepare for climate and disaster impacts which they face in their livelihoods. These groups have now available market access with value chain analysis as well as technical assistance provided through brand development and participation in market events. These approaches emphasize greater participation and engagement of women and vulnerable groups including Kalinago women in the development of agriculture, agro-processing in these rural communities. The project had its overall objective to reduce vulnerabilities of small farmers and women groups and we have done so um, remarkably with the partnership that we've experienced on this project. I am conscious that the project served as a mechanism to support the government in achieving the sustainable development goals and I'm acknowledging that the support Guidance and leadership from you, the stakeholders, have been in instrumental in enabling the many successes of this project and the other in initiatives of the UNDP office in Dominica. In closing, I would like to express sincere, sincere appreciation in, for the incredible partnerships that we've experienced on this project. To the government of Japan for entrusting UNDP, as they are the donors, entrusting UNDP with the implementation of such an initiative I know this project is just one of the examples of, of, of the government of Japan's continued support in the region and of course in Dominica. 
and to, of course, our government partners, particularly the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of National Security. Our progress today has only been possible through your strong leadership, engagement, guidance, and I'm confident that this partnership will further enhance the work that we continue to do <coughs> together. The Gaidon project is scheduled to end on December 31st. Linda Martin for Kyrie TV News. In other top stories, President of Dominica, His Excellency Charles Safra, urges Dominicans to treat migrants with dignity. Dominica joined the rest of the world in observing International Migrants Day on Sunday under the theme, I am a migrant. In a statement to mark the occasion, President of Dominica, His Excellency Charles A. Severin, called on Dominicans to remember their own history as migrants, pursuing gains for themselves and their families. He says, quote, The effects of climate change, particularly in the past seven years, have shown how easily Dominicans can become migrants, internally or internationally displaced due to the effects of natural disasters, end quote. As a result, Mr. Savre urged all to reach out with a helping hand, an air of understanding, a word of warmth and conversation to the migrants in our midst. Dominicans were also encouraged to reject hate, anti-migrant xenophobia, and all negative and inhumane approaches to people on the move. This is the Kyrie TV News. We'll be back after this break. Are you looking for that perfect setup for your conference, seminar, or company function? Or maybe you need a low-budget setup for your party, dinner, or private gathering. How about that professional production for your grand concert, festival, or outdoor event? Kyrie Sounds is here to provide you with everything you need. PA system, stage, lighting, microphones, tents, LED digital screens, generators, projectors, crowd barriers, and more. We also offer free event consultation to ensure the success of your special event. Call us today at 612-4050. Kyrie Sounds, your partner in sound, stage and lighting services. Welcome back. Minister for Finance, Dr. the Honorable Irvin McIntyre, has described the recently held Caribbean Boxing Championships hosted in Dominica as a great move for sports tourism. During the finals on Saturday night, Dominica, having amassed 27 points, copped the second place position. Dr. McIntyre says Dominica's hosting of the championships will pave the way for a promising future in boxing. I think we had an excellent tournament. I'm very pleased with how we organize, how we structure the tournament. And um, I think a lot of praise goes out to our local boxing association, to the Caribbean Boxing Association as well. And the mere fact that we had the American Boxing Confederation here, it means a lot to us. And um, we're just so happy that we could have hosted this Caribbean Boxing Association. I think it went very well. All the boxers, they put their best foot forward. And um, the future looks bright for us in boxing. As a matter of fact, we know we have most probably we are trying our best to have the OECS boxing tournament here in Dominica next year. And from then on, let's see how we can, how even our local boxing, so the, the bigger picture is obviously for us to have boxers at the Olympics. McIntyre himself, a former ringside boxer for the Caribbean Boxing Association, says he is committed to helping develop sports in Dominica as there are several benefits for the country and its youth. We can see so many different advantages of young people playing sports. Whether it's in terms of their emotional intelligence, how they mix with their peers, how they handle life, you know, how they just become complete individuals in the future. So I'll definitely prepare my part to just encourage the whole sporting environment and the whole mentality towards sports in Dominica. Barbados won the championships with a total of 36 points, while the USVI placed third with 20 points. And Flo Dominica observes Mission Day at the Dominica Infirmary. Employees of Flo Dominica give freely of their time and talents to the residents of the Dominica Infirmary as part of uh, parent company Liberty Latin America's Mission Week 2022 volunteer initiative. The week of volunteering and community outreach took place from December 2nd to the 9th, 2022. On Thursday, December 8th, a group of colleagues from Flu Dominica, led by General Manager Jeffrey Baptiste and other senior members of the Flu Dominica team, visited the Dominica Infirmary to engage with residents as their contribution to Mission Week. 
The staff, many of whom also have elderly parents and grandparents, welcomed the opportunity to participate in grooming activities, walks, feeding, and engaging conversations with the residents. To complement the visit, a presentation of wholesale grocery items was made to the Dominica Infirmary, as well as a contribution of a Samsung Galaxy handset to support their communication requirements. You're watching the Kyrie TV News. Stay tuned for a recap of the headlines right after this. Are you looking for that perfect setup for your conference, seminar, or company function? Or maybe you need a low-budget setup for your party, dinner, or private gathering. How about that professional production for your grand concert, festival, or outdoor event? Kyrie Sounds is here to provide you with everything you need. PA system, stage, lighting, microphones, tents, LED digital screens, generators, projectors, crowd barriers, and more. We also offer free event consultation to ensure the success of your special event. Call us today at 612-4050. Kyrie Sounds, your partner in sound, stage and lighting services. To end the news, the headlines again. The Achievement Learning Center achieves a milestone in curriculum development for special needs children. Dominicans urge to treat migrants with respect and dignity. And Minister for Finance optimistic about Dominica's future in the boxing arena. Tune in to 107.9, 93.1, 91.1 .1, and 88.7 FM Monday to Friday for our radio newscasts at 6.30 a.m., 1 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. Go to Kyrie TV on Flow Channel 953 to watch our TV newscasts Monday to Friday at 8 p.m. with repeats at 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Kyrie FM. Check us out on Instagram at Kyrie FM and follow us on Twitter at Kyrie FM Dominica. Visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on any newscasts you may have missed. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Vanessa Bruno. Thank you for watching.